Hi, this is Brandon at Android Device and Tutorials. Uh, here we're going to do a quick kind of uh, run through of Android 4.4 KitKat. And of course, this is the uh, Google Nexus 5, which is the only device that has KitKat right now. Uh, some of the features we'll be able to actually show you in action, some of them um, we may just tell you about, show you where the settings are, uh, etc. But <clears throat> here we go. Okay, one of the, the first things we want to talk about is the fact that it has uh, much smarter location settings to help you save battery. Um, now what you'll do, let's go to settings. Okay, location. And here you'll see mode. Now right now we have it on high accuracy. But now you can use GPS, Wi-Fi, and mobile networks to estimate location. Now if you aren't that worried about it being completely precise all the time, you can actually set it all the way down to device only. And what that'll do is it will definitely save a little bit of battery. Um, we haven't used the phone long enough to see a huge difference, but there is definitely a difference. Um, so changing this mode can help save battery quite a bit, um, as well as obviously having this, this kind of accuracy that we didn't have before. Okay, so that's, that's the first thing. Second, which isn't really a new Easter egg, but it is one that um, is a little bit different with Android 4.4, and that is when you go to About Phone, and you see your Android version, you tap it three times real fast, and it brings up this. And there you go. So, click it quick, flies into the actual Android 4.4 screen. Uh, you can get out of it just by hitting back. No big deal. <clears throat> so, there's number two. Um, one great new feature that we've noticed on this is the fact that it has a photo editor that is incredibly um, it's an incredible improvement over previous ones so let's go ahead and just jump in here and here's a picture of my dog okay so we'll tap we'll go to the editor okay and now you have your filters borders cropping lighting things like that um, and you can go in make your changes come into the add a border to it um, let's Go ahead and crop it down. We don't need all that up top. I'm going to cut his head off. Okay, so we crop it. Okay, there you go. You've completely edited your image um, that quick uh, to make it look nice for whatever it is you want to use it for. You can save it. Okay, it is saved. Now, one great thing is you can actually come back into this image at any time. It did overwrite the old image, but it does save it. Oops, you got to go back into the editor. Um, but you can tap up here and reset and instantly take it back to the original image in the event you decided you don't want it to look that way anymore or whatever. Okay, so there's a photo editor, which you'll see there's a lot more features there, and we have other video, another video that kind of explains that. Um, now, the UI is a little bit different. Okay, here, of course, you've got your normal menu, and you've got these on-screen buttons. But now, when you're actually using something, like we'll just go back to the gallery for an example, and you're actually in something and you want to, um, yeah, let's just exit. Okay. So we're sitting here. This is generally an in-game type feature, things like that. But see, everything disappears so that you can, um, you know, use the full real estate of the screen. Um, and you can always just swipe down. To bring it down and it'll vanish um, so that's nice um, another thing is cloud printing cloud printing was added I know I'm running through these kind of quickly but you if you have questions just ask at androidevice.com or even in the comments of this video um, so we go to settings we scroll down and we'll notice a new feature printing and here it actually has cloud print and your HP print service plugin now these services can be um, set up, searched for, so you can find different uh, different cloud printers, um, HP service, see, and it'll actually find any wireless printers you have so that you can print directly from your device. Now we don't have any that are pushing out any kind of signal right now, so nothing's going to show up there. Um, but that is where you would go to set that up. Okay. Um, now. The performance on this is much better. I won't go into this in too much detail because the average user is not going to care. Um, they just know it's faster. 
Um, it only requires 512 megs of RAM for KitKat to run, and on this a device like this, it runs really fast because of it. Um, there are a few things that they changed. Um, some of the features that reduce memory are like uh, the Dalvik JIT code, cache tuning, um, kernel, same page merging, um, things like that. And there's also new APIs to help developers create more memory efficient programs than they have in past versions of Android. Um, another feature is screen recording, which currently uh, can only be done via ADB. So it's mostly a developer feature kind of so that they can do videos of their apps, things like that from the device. Um, there will be a massive amount of screen recording uh, apps, I'm sure, available very shortly. Um, there is built-in IR Blaster support, which is infrared. Um, a lot of Samsung devices now have it. Um, you'll notice the... Um, which one is it? Galaxy S4 has it, and the Note 3 has an IR, kind of an infrared in the top. Um, that is now natively supported by KitKat. Um, so that's, I'm pretty sure that's about all that's kind of new over previous versions. Um, one thing I will say is that um, they've already discussed a 4.4.1 update. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing there, except uh, adding a little more tablet support, because I think there were some issues there. Um, but that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, uh, let us know at androidadvice.com or in the comments of this video. Thanks for watching.